Thank you very much for the kind introduction and for the invitation to speak at this year's Q2B conference. It is truly an honor to once again speak at this event, even if we can't all be together in Silicon Valley this year. The United States Air Force Research Laboratory, or AFRL, is the primary research and development center for the Air Force and Space Force. Our job is to invent the future for the Air Force and Space Force across a wide range of game-changing technologies. For those of you who may not be familiar with AFRL, it consists of 11,000 employees headquartered at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base in Ohio and has locations in eight other states as well as three international locations in the UK, Tokyo, and Chile. AFRL executes a budget of over $6 billion annually. The history of AFRL and its many forms and incarnations dates back over 100 years in supporting the development of science and technology for the United States Department of the Air Force and the Department of Defense. AFRL is a world leading partner for transformational research and development and has not only been transforming the Air Force, but has been transforming the world with our technological innovation for many decades. I'd like to spend a few minutes discussing some of the great technologies that have their roots at AFRL and the DoD. For example, in the 1960s, AFRL was an early partner in the development of the DoD ARPANET. ARPANET was originally created to serve as a secure and resilient communications network for the United States President to use in times of national crisis. The information directorate in Rome, New York, where I am from, was in fact an early note on the ARPANET. This network eventually evolved into today's internet, but who could possibly foresee its potential to revolutionize and transform the world back in its early stages? Every facet of our life has been changed in one way or another by the internet. This is one example of how the final application of technologies that we're developing weren't even imaginable in the early stages of development. I envision a similar model for quantum information science, where we are only beginning to scratch the surface of revolutionary applications. Quantum is next, and AFRL is doubling down their R&D dollars and open business model to collaborate and transform the world together with thought leaders, visionaries, and quantum experts. Similarly, we are on the cusp of another life-altering scientific and technological breakthrough with quantum information science. AFRL is investing and is seeking partnership in the advancement of quantum technologies we realize that we cannot go at it alone and only by pooling our resources and working with other government agencies, industry, academia, and non-traditional partners can we truly make a difference and accelerate the development of quantum technologies. The Air Force is prioritizing the acceleration of quantum technologies by committing resources in response to demand signals and to establish the goalposts and vision to make Q-Day a reality. We define this Q-Day as the moment when the next generation of quantum technologies will be fielded by the U.S. Air Force, providing some form of a new capability, whether it be in timing, sensing, communications and networking, or commuting. AFRL is always leaning forward and pushing the boundaries of unique models to push on accelerating technologies. Just as with space exploration and the development of the internet, the U.S. government is invested in accelerating quantum research and development and associated risks as first adopters for this fundamental technology to move this ball forward. This past summer, AFRL partnered with other DOD organizations by awarding funding to universities and small businesses to advance quantum enabling technologies. First, let's talk about this quantum collider. In June, AFRL hosted the first ever virtual small business technology transfer quantum collider event where the Air Force organized around principal investigators in the government, academia, and commercial industry to accelerate the discovery and application of quantum information science. AFRL awarded 23 small businesses 35 phase one STTR contracts in the amount of $150,000 each, totaling 5.25 million over the two day event. AFRL just hosted the follow-on to this Phase 1 event where we awarded $35 million of Phase 2 awards during the Virtual Quantum Collider 2.0, building on the $5 million of Phase 1 awards. Both the Phase 1 and Phase 2 virtual events offered audiences live panels, thought-provoking discussions, and engaging networking sessions that keep our quantum ecosystem energized and committed to accelerating the advancement of quantum technology applications. Now let's talk about the $1 million International Quantum U Tech Accelerator. In September, our Innovare Advancement Center hosted the $1 million International Quantum U Tech Accelerator, a first-of-its-kind international event where 36 of the world's top university teams 
pitch their proposals to advance quantum enabling technologies in the areas of timing, sensing, communications, and computing. Funded by the Air Force Research Laboratory's Information Directorate, Air Force Office of Scientific Research, and the Office of Naval Research, these basic research applications feed the bleeding edge of quantum innovation. The Quantum U Tech Accelerator spotlighted 36 American and international university teams as they pitched their projects live in quantum timing sensing, communications, and computing. The virtual event featured messages from 23 quantum thought leaders and visionaries, including a keynote on quantum fundamentals for everyone from American astrophysicist Dr. Neil deGrasse Tyson and U.S. Air Force and U.S. Space Force Acquisition Executive Dr. Will Roper. At the conclusion of the event, 18 outstanding university teams went on to qualify to receive over $1.35 million in basic research funding awards to advance quantum enabling technologies such as quantum sensors for GPS denied navigation, a chip scale integrated quantum platform, ion traps, and innovative lasers. AFRL will continue to invest in new fundamental science and technology areas like quantum and build out a robust quantum ecosystem through partnership, talent recruitment, scientific investigation, deliberate goal setting, and resource commitment with pitch events like these colliders and the accelerators. Quantum information science implies game-changing technology that will transform the warfighting domain in revolutionary and unprecedented ways. Now we are turning our attention to the quantum-enabled Air Force capabilities. We break our quantum information science program into four technical areas covering timing, sensing, communications, networking, and computing. We envision timing and sensing as being more near-term applications and communications slash networking and computing as having longer-term payoffs. Let's take a minute to look at some of the applications that we envision for quantum-enabled technologies. Quantum aims to enable precision navigation and timing even in a GPS denied or degraded environment. This is enabled by precise clocks that require fewer timing updates. Quantum sensors, including gradiometers, gravimeters, and magnetometers will allow GPS-like accuracy over long durations of time. Quantum sensors may also enable detection of bunkers at, or tunnels at long standoff distances. Quantum networks will enable low probability of intercept communication systems and secure encryption. We also envision where picosecond time transfer will be possible amongst widely separated platforms, allowing for data fusion amongst many disparate apertures. Quantum networks may also allow distributed clock networks using quantum repeaters. Finally, quantum computers may assist in the decision-making process and transform data into rapidly actionable information. Six AFRL directorates have active research programs in QIS. The Air Force Office of Scientific Research funds 6-1 Basic Research. The Materials and Manufacturing Directorate has ongoing work in solid state quantum defects, materials, and supply chain. The Space Vehicles Directorate has work in position, navigation, and timing. The Sensors Directorate has work in quantum emitters, device fabrication, and PNT architectures. The Directed Energy Directorate has satellite-based quantum communication and networking and optical channels. And finally, the Information Directorate has ongoing programs in quantum computing, communications, and networking. Let's now dig a bit deeper in all of these technology areas. First, let's talk about timing. And we'll break these areas out by current capabilities, where we'd like to go, as well as some recent progress. For timing, stability on the order of 10 to the minus seconds per day under static conditions with volumes on the order of 10 liters GPS updates currently are needed several times per day. However, smaller lightweight clocks like the CSAC system are less accurate than research grade demonstrations. Where we are working towards is improved stability under static conditions with volume on the order of 500 liters with fewer timing updates where mobile clocks hold time for weeks to a month. Larger clocks in the short term will allow for more stable systems once stability is achieved focus will then turn to reducing the volume. In terms of recent results, we are currently testing next generation atomic clocks and their performance. And most recently, there have been successful quantum timing outreach funding, for example, through small business and university outreach. This took the form of the quantum collider phase one and phase two. Now let's look at sensing. Currently, sensors can operate over hundreds of meters per hour 
with volume of 100 to 1,000 liters with GPS-like accuracy for much less than one hour. AFRL's focus is towards lower noise sensors with reduced size, weight, and power, also known as lower swap. Where we are working towards are reduced sensor noise with moderate volume so that GPS-like accuracy can be maintained for longer than an hour. In fact, quantum-enabled strategic challenge is in the works with Australia, Canada, New Zealand, UK, and the US in a partnership to field the quantum technologies in a 2022 shipboard platform at the RIMPAC 2022 exercise. In terms of recent results, papers in IP and critical quantum sensing technologies for low swap quantum sensors such as rubidium have occurred. We'll now turn our attention towards satellite, ground, and air-based quantum networks. First, let's look at the satellite piece of the network. In satellite-based quantum networks, we currently have entanglement-based quantum communications field experiments simulating space-to-earth links. Prototyping and field testing components are in the works and designing quantum ground transceivers. We are now working towards optimal wavelength for quantum communication studies, developing entangled photon sources for space-to-earth links, in demonstrating entanglement-based quantum network applications, as well as building quantum ground transceivers. Additionally, daytime space-to-earth quantum communications enabled by adaptive optics are a key component of our strategy. Most recently, field experiments under conditions representative of daytime space-to-earth downlink enabled by adaptive optics occurred in December 2019, we procured and characterized entangled photon sources, as well as establishing new SIBR and sitters for pulse entangled photon sources. Now let's turn our attention to the ground and air-based pieces of the quantum networks. Currently, we continue to build up very unique capabilities in this area. AFRL is pursuing trapped ions, superconducting qubits, and quantum photonic integrated circuits for quantum networking applications. Our intent is to move beyond point-to-point -point demos to distribute entanglement across a multi-node network. Our focus is on entanglement distribution in homogeneous and heterogeneous network. Where we are working towards is realizing a three-node network with the ability to distribute entanglement with, in, and beyond these nodes. We are also looking to demonstrate a memory-based ground node connected to a UAV at our Stockbridge research site, as well as fully quantum transmission, which will ensure data integrity throughout the network and may provide immediate intrusion detection. Recent results have included the fact that all three qubit technologies have been demonstrated at AFRL, two trapped ion nodes are operational, quantum photonic integrated circuits are being tested in development in partnership with AIM Photonics, and superconducting qubit measurements are underway with some recent results that you'll be hearing more about in the near future. Next, let's look at algorithm development for quantum computing. As I've talked about in the past, AFRL does not develop quantum computing hardware, but in fact focuses on algorithm development. Currently, users are coding towards specific hardware as each system is unique. You'll hear about this quite a bit throughout Q2B. AFRL is also exploring different programming languages and available algorithms. AFRL is in fact an IBM hub member which allows AFRL, our collaborators and partners, access to IBM devices. We are working towards developing, testing, and evaluating algorithms for various applications such as scheduling problems and testing neural networks. Our algorithm team will test and develop algorithms for commercially available devices as well as expanding access to other commercially available devices and NISC-based systems as they become available. In terms of recent results, we have published these results using IBM's 20-qubit quantum computer in AIP advances, and AFRL has now added a ninth user to the AFRL IBM Q Network Hub. We also developed quantum computing short courses in partnership with NYSTEC, USRA, and AFIT. Let's talk a bit further about some of our other areas and algorithms that we are very interested in. This includes quantum walk circuit design, developing tools. Here we are creating circuit techniques for coin-driven quantum random walks, quantum adder algorithms inspired shift operators, and novel approaches to enforcing boundary conditions between nodes. 
We're also studying new probability distributions for potential algorithmic applications. We are continuing to optimize for IBM chips, including designing NISC-friendly circuits for testing experimentally, tailored to IBM's heavy hexagonal qubit connectivity, studying fidelity rates for various quantum walk ingredients. Additionally, we are exploring quantum machine learning, where we are identifying computational bottlenecks in classical machine learning algorithms, developing algorithms in QuizKit, and in implementing quantum subroutines. Finally, we are evaluating the performance of quantum machine learning algorithms and current quantum hardware, where we are studying the effects of noise and the accuracy of these results. Enabling technologies and workforce development are a key part of the AFRL quantum strategy. Enabling technologies. Here, our focus is on reducing the size, weight, and power of enabling technologies with deterministic qubit design and placement. We ensure that underlying and enabling technologies can endure high dynamic range environments, and we move from bulky systems that require cryogenic systems or stabilized lasers into integrated photonic and room temperature devices. In terms of workforce development, it is important to ensure that a quantum smart, multidisciplinary workforce is available, and we need and look to majors in physics, computer science, engineering, math, photonics, as well as material science. We are also looking to strengthen ties with our international partners through initiatives like the Innovare Advancement Center. I'd like to now spend the rest of my talk discussing the Air Force Research Laboratory quantum strategy in our new open innovation campus. We are on the ground floor of transformation. Just like the ARPANET changed the world, so will quantum technologies. AFRL is building purposeful partnerships that will accelerate the development of talent in a quantum technology ecosystem. This strategy will drive awareness of Air Force quantum information science initiatives and lead to the quicker development and deployment of this research and technology, bringing Q-Day to the Air Force faster. Quantum breakthroughs are challenging and will take diversity of technology and thought. The Air Force is building this ecosystem through accelerators and colliders that bring together academia, industry, and the government to accelerate the rate of advancements in the field. The Air Force is invested in building an ecosystem of quantum smart and STEM enthusiastic world leading visionaries to change the world and drive innovations. I'd now like to talk about Innovare and the National Quantum Initiative. A few years ago, the Air Force realized that it needed a different type of business model in order to better engage with partners, including international and non-traditional partners. The Information Directorate recently teamed with New York State Oneida County, the Griffiths Institute, the State University of New York, and the City of Rome to embark on a bold new endeavor to build an open campus located out the side the security perimeter of the Information Directorate in Rome, New York. Our open innovation construct was built to enable great partnerships with industry and academic leaders in advancing game-changing technologies being developed right here in Rome, New York. We recently stood up a 40,000 square foot facility named the Innovare Advancement Center to accelerate technology and talent development to drive national security and economic competitiveness. The Innovare name is very unique and fits the mission of the center very well. It comes from the Latin innovatus, which means to renew or change from in or into and vu meaning new. So literally, we are truly pushing into the new. Innovare Advancement Center is a globally connected, world-class facility acting as a lightning rod for top scientific, engineering, and entrepreneurial talent to leverage highly specialized resources and accelerate both expertise and innovation in critical research areas, including artificial intelligence, machine learning, cybersecurity, and quantum information science. Innovare is a significant step forward in implementing the National Quantum Initiative Act which aims to foster the development of a quantum technology ecosystem among government, industry, and academia. Innovare contains world-class, state-of-the-art facilities, including two new, very large quantum labs with complex environmental control. We will bring together world-class talent in these labs, as well as on the IBM Q network, which we talked about a bit earlier. 
We are open to flexible partnership models, including educational partnership agreements and cooperative research and development agreements for both domestic and international partners. This is one facet that sets Innovare apart from some of our other partnership mechanisms. We are also actively pursuing entrepreneurial ventures in tech startups at Innovare. This very unique facility and business model is developing the runway to the world in quantum, AI, machine learning, cyber, and UAS technologies. Please contact us. You can join us at our virtual booth to learn more about QIS at AFRL and the Innovare Advancement Center. You can also follow us on social media to stay up to date on future events. We have an exciting event on the horizon in 2021. Stay tuned in the coming months for more details on our second International Quantum Information Science Workshop. As we build this magnetic ecosystem to accelerate quantum, we will grow and prosper together. Please join us in this journey.